Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi guys, it's me, Katie Lee, CGC, and today is Wannabe Wednesday. Welcome back to my channel. On Wannabe Wednesdays, I talk about topics of interest for those of you who are interested in learning more about a genetic counseling career or for those who are currently applying. And today, this video is for those of you who applied for 2021 admission and are anxiously awaiting interview invites. I remember the time well. It is so anxiety inducing even to think about waiting for those interview invites. Today, what I want to do is share some tips for what you can do while you are waiting for that random date or dates that each school you apply to is going to drop their invites. I feel like one thing that is super weird about genetic counseling is compared to other master programs and even PhD programs, there is, it's one so competitive and nobody really understands it. Like it's hard for family and friends to understand how competitive it is. I think a lot of them see that you have put so much time and energy into maybe being a genetic counseling assistant or taking additional classes or your volunteer experiences. And they think you're a total shoe in You're for sure going to get interviews. You'll for sure get into a program. But, you know, unfortunately, it's just not that simple. A lot of great candidates don't get a lot of interviews or some don't even get any. It can be really hard that I think, at least in my experience, family and friends just don't understand how competitive it is because for a lot of master's programs, you simply send in your application and maybe a couple letters of reference and a transcript and that's it. And genetic counseling school is just so much more involved for whatever reason. What I'm going to do today is talk about three self-care strategies to take care of yourself while you are waiting for these interview invitations. And if you've already gotten some interviews, oh my gosh, congratulations. I am so happy for you. I hope they keep rolling in. If you're still waiting, that's okay. I really hope yours roll in as well. Self-care is kind of a buzzword in genetic counseling, and I feel like it is in a lot of helping professions, this idea that you need to take care of yourself to take care of others. And a lot of genetic counseling jobs, they can be stressful. You can have compassion fatigue from working with other people in really difficult situations and counseling them and having compassion and empathy for them. So during school, during genetic counseling school, you will talk about self-care all the time and what genetic counselors can do to take care of themselves. In fact, I almost guarantee you that if you do get an interview, during at least one of your interviews, at least one interviewer will ask you what you do for self-care. Not only do you want self-care techniques for when you actually are a genetic counselor, but it's important to have self-care techniques in place now during the stressful time while you're gearing up to interview. And of course, for during grad school, which can be really stressful too. These tips that I'm going to provide are all self-care tips, essentially. I think the best thing that you can do while you wait for interview invitations to roll in is kind of to distract yourself, to find something else to do. You've been putting in months and months, probably years and years into getting ready to apply to genetic counseling school or to reapply to genetic counseling school. This period of waiting right now between when your applications are submitted until you get interviews and then again when your interviews are complete until match day, those are those two periods where you absolutely can keep on focusing on your volunteering and improving yourself as a candidate, but also you should take the time to congratulate yourself on a job well done for making it this far and to take a break and relieve some stress. My first suggestion is to read a book. You will not have time to read in grad school. I guarantee it. You will not be reading any fun books in grad school. You will just be reading the assigned readings and genetics related books. So take some time to read a book. Maybe pick up a fun book, just a light read that you've been wanting to get your hands on. Or if you're interested in reading a genetic counselor book, like an interesting genetic counselor book, I'm talking like a book that's popular amongst genetic counselors and something you could talk about on interviews. I've got three recommendations for you. The first recommendation I have is The Gene by Siddhartha Mukherjee. And it is so good. It is a nonfiction. It discusses the history of genetics and how our understanding of genetics has evolved. Prior to his release of The Gene, he has another book called The Emperor of All Maladies that my friend Sanchi recommended I read, and it is also really, really good. That one's kind of similar in that it's a big history of cancer. 
Um, I might even like that one better than the gene. They'd both be great. Number two, Middle Sex by Jeffrey Eugenides. Eugenides? Not sure how to pronounce his last name, but this is a classic genetic counselor book, and it's been out for a long time. It's a fictional story of an individual who's intersex, meaning that their sex characteristics don't fit that binary notion of male or female. The narrator of the story, Cal, is raised as a female, um, but you'll see, I don't want to ruin the story. It's it's so good. It, if you like like generational stories, which I love, this is a three-generation story of this Greek family. And the narrator is just, Cal is so endearing. So I really recommend that one. My third recommendation on this list is Far From the Tree, Parents, Children, and the Search for Identity by Andrew Solomon. Andrew Solomon is an amazing author. The stories he tells in this book are just so well-researched. I think he said he spent like 10 years gathering these stories uh, of essentially interviews with parents who have children who are somehow, that are somehow different from the parents, whether they are different because of a genetic difference, like they have a syndrome that the parents don't have, a psychiatric diagnosis, uh, their orientation, um, they're different because they are a criminal, or even he has some stories about children, children that came of because of rape. Andrew Solomon came to speak at NSGC I don't know, maybe three years ago. And he was just a great speaker. I recommend. I'm not sure if he has any TED Talks. I'm sure he's on YouTube somewhere. He's super well-spoken and his book is very well-written and fascinating. So those are three books. I recommend picking one up and distracting yourself with some reading. Okay, tip number two, start exercising. If you have not been exercising and you've been putting it off because you had to get those applications submitted and now you're putting it off because soon you have to start uh, preparing for interviews. Now is a great time to either just get outside for a run or a walk in some fresh air or to start doing your home exercises again, whether it's like yoga or weights or some sort of fun like hit class you like to do. I actually just joined a gym a little over a month ago because I just couldn't force myself to work out inside anymore. It's been happening too long for COVID. It's winter here in Colorado and the sidewalks are full of ice and it's not that safe or fun to run in the freezing cold and icy slippery sidewalks. So get moving. It will help you (laughs) physically. It will help you with the stress. And it's a great habit to have in place before you go to grad school. Thing to do number three while you're waiting for your interview invitations. Get into therapy. If you are somebody who thinks you could use therapy and you haven't done it yet, which definitely was me at that age, I had never done therapy until I was actually in grad school. Actually, that's not true. My parents did require me to go to therapy when they got divorced. And um, all I can really remember from that therapist, I think her name was Marianne, is she she would talk to us in this voice, even though I was eight years old. And I thought it was so silly. So um, anyways, if you need therapy, or even if you're not sure, but you've just never done it, it's a great time to establish care with a therapist. Yes, you might move, but lots of therapists do video consultations these days. So Try one out. Get your issues on the table because during grad school, for me, I can definitely say, and I think most of my classmates would agree, it's really stressful. There's a lot of pressure on you from yourself and then from your supervisors, but honestly, probably mostly from yourself to do a really, really good job for yourself and for the patients you see as a student. So I think it could be really helpful to to explore any longstanding issues you have, whether it's with a relationship or multiple relationships, your childhood, family members, things you'd like to resolve. And then you'll also have that support in place if you want to see that therapist while you're in grad school. One other reason why it's great to have a therapist is they will totally understand how stressed out you might be about waiting for interview invitations. And it can be really nice just to have a sounding board and to have someone to talk to about that when maybe some of the other people in your life just don't quite understand. Those are my quick tips for things to do while you're waiting for your invitations to roll in. I know it's so hard. It is so just scary and it's almost impossible not to ruminate on what is going to happen. What am I going to do if I don't get invitations? I get it. I was there and it is so stressful. Hang in there, you guys. Please like this video and subscribe because next week I'm going to be talking about tips to start preparing for interviews. All right, talk to you guys later.